Hello everyone. Today's topic is different types of anticoagulants. Anticoagulants are the substance that resist coagulation. Now I am going to discuss different types of anticoagulants. Number one, EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. For each and every anticoagulants. We should remember two things. Number one is its mode of action, and number two, its required quantity or required amount. For EDTA, one to two milligram per ml of blood is required, and its mode of action, chelation with calcium ion. Usually. Disodium dipotassium or tripotassium salts of EDTA is used. Number two, potassium oxalate. Its required quantity, same as EDTA. Its mode of action, same as EDTA. But here is one point. Potassium oxalate can cause shrinkage of RBCs. And greater than three mg per ml of blood can cause hemolysis. It means excessive amount of potassium oxalate can cause hemolysis. Number three, for that purpose, shrinkage of RBC or hemolysis, potassium oxalate is used along with sodium fluoride at a ratio three is to one. Potassium oxalate three and sodium fluoride one part. And required quantity is four milligram per ml of blood. Now coming to number four, potassium oxalate is used along with ammonium oxalate at two is to three ratio, which is also known as double oxalate. The ratio is very important in double oxalate. Potassium oxalate two part and three part ammonium oxalate. This mixture has an advantage. It does not allow. It doesn't alter the volume of RBCs. Number five, sodium fluoride mode of action. It interrupts glycolysis by inhibit enolase activity. If sodium fluoride is used only as an anticoagulant, its required quantity is six to ten milligram per ml of blood. But when sodium fluoride is used along with potassium oxalate, required quantity is usually less, two milligram per ml of blood. Number six, trisodium citrate, Na3C6H5O7 2H2O. Its mode of action due to reversible chelation of calcium ion. Calcium ion is a very important in coagulation pathway. It converts calcium converts prothrombin to thrombin. Usually, trisodium citrate is used for different tests at different percentage. For ESR. Usually, three point eight percent trisodium is required, and for coagulation studies, just like P-time, APTT, D-dimer, FDP, three point two percent trisodium citrate is required. Here is one thing is very important: that's the ratio of anticoagulant of blood. For ESR anticoagulant, one part of anticoagulant is A. Mixed with four part of blood, but for coagulation profile or coagulation studies, one part of anticoagulant is mixed with nine part of blood. This ratio is very important. Number seven, heparin. It is the best and most widely used anticoagulant. You can easily see that the quantity of heparin. Is very low. That means a small amount is enough for anticoagulation activity. 
जीरो पॉइंट यूज वाले जीरो पॉइंट टू मिलीग्राम पर एम एल ऑफ ब्लड इज रिक्वायर्ड इस मोड ऑफ एक्शन हिपरिन एक्सिलेट द एक्शन ऑफ एंटी थ्रोम्बिन थ्री एंड द फंक्शन ऑफ एंटी थ्रोम्बिन एंटी थ्रोम्बिन थ्री न्यूट्रलाइज थ्रोम्बिन एज इट इज न्यूट्रलाइज थ्रोम्बिन दैट द फिब्रिनोजिन टू फिब्रिन दिस कन्वर्सन इज इनहिबिटेड You can easily observe that at the bottom part of the paper, calcium is required for conversion of prothrombin to thrombin, and thrombin is required for conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. Fibrin is the clot formation, fibrin meswak, and further fibrin meswak or fibrin is stabilized by factor thirteen. 